Welcome back to Creative Excuses, where we make excuses to be creative out of the video games that we play. We're back with another build video, but this one is different than all of my others. This one is a PvP build. What? I hate PvP, don't I? Yeah, most of the time I find that PvP is really hard to read and get a handle on. It's not like Smite, where every character has only four abilities, some items, and a few actives. PvP in ESO is complex. There's lots of people on the field. They all have access to 10 abilities and like 10 million sets that can give stats, that can pull you in, push you out, send a bird to peck your eyes out, or basically anything else. PvP is complicated. But I needed Caltrops unlocked on my Templar for a PvE build, so I decided to hunker down and try to make a build out of what I already had on the character. And guess what? The build was so fun and so simple, I actually enjoyed PvP. For the first time ever. So if you're like me and PvP is just sorcery that you can't understand, then this build might be for you. Now remember, this video is not a guide for the sets, skills, or any of that. Instead, I'm going to walk you through the problems I ran into while trying to learn PvP and how I used the build to make my life easier and solve some of those problems. For the actual build guide on gear, sets, attributes, passives, etc., check the description where there's a link to Alcast's new build editor where you can find this build set out in an easy to follow format. Before we get into the theme, and there is still a theme, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to see more ESO build challenges like this one and a new progress series that's coming out soon. It really helps the channel out a lot. Also, I live stream with my wife over on twitch.tv slash creative excuses. Come hang out while I make builds and play a variety of games. Right now, my wife Shelby and I are playing through the Halo Master Chief Collection on co-op on Wednesday nights, and I'm playing ESO on Thursday and Sunday nights. Come by if you want to hang out or if you have any questions about the builds or videos. All right, let's jump into it. First things first, what forced this 100% PvE player to go into PvP? Well, this amazing ability right here, Razor Caltrops. This ability is one of the best sources of Major Breach in the game, one of the most essential debuffs in the game for any solo build. Major Breach is right up there with Major Brutality or Major Sorcery and Major Savagery or Prophecy. It is pretty much essential for soloing arenas or dungeons, and Caltrops will put it on a whole group of enemies at once. It is fantastic. So I needed it for my upcoming PvE build video on this same character, which you can see a preview of in this video here. I made a solo Stamina Templar based on Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, and it is super fun and one of my best builds ever. But again, I needed Caltrops. So what were the problems that I ran into trying to unlock this all-important skill? The first major problem, which I already mentioned, is that PvP in ESO is super complicated. There are six classes, three teams, multiple game modes, and that is just Battlegrounds, which is the only kind of PvP that I've really done. Imperial City and Cyrodiil only add even more complexity. Basically, keeping track of what is going on inside of a battleground can be pretty difficult when you're just learning the game modes and how to fight actual people. So how do you solve that problem? You simplify things. The idea is that the fewer skills that I have to manage and do myself, the better. The fewer buffs, debuffs, and damage over time skills that I have to worry about, the more time I can spend looking for stuns, the more time I can spend watching for how that Dragonite is going to jump on me, the more time I can spend paying attention to how my character interacts with lines of sight to avoid damage or to deal more damage, the more time I can spend learning how the objective game modes work. Basically, the simpler the build is, the easier it will be to learn PvP. Other build videos for PvP often don't make builds like that, at least in my experience. Most commonly, I see PvP builds with thumbnails like this one, where they're advertising huge stats. 12k pen, 34k resistances, stage 3 vampire, 5800 weapon damage, 1300 magic recovery, 2400 stamina recovery, and if you buy one now, we'll throw in a free pet. No purchase necessary, terms and conditions apply, like managing a lot of temporary buffs and only having these stats some of the time. Builds like these, based on just those stats alone, are great. But they do me absolutely no good when I don't know what the hell is happening. So, I simplified. I used three tools to simplify my build as much as possible. I needed three buffs that I just didn't have to worry about. So I put Camouflage Hunter on the front bar, just like this is a PvE build. Then I put Hercene's Bounty on the front bar. And last, I decided to use Night Mother's Gaze as a five-piece set on the front bar. How did these three help? 
Well, Camo Hunter gives me 12% crit chance for just sitting there looking pretty. And Hircine's Bounty gives me 20% weapon and spell damage for doing the same thing. The Night Mother's Gaze takes care of one of the most important debuffs in the game for me, which ironically is what I was doing PvP to get in the first place, Major Breach. With these three tools, I now had way fewer abilities to manage. When I'm going on the offensive on this build, all I have to use are the front four abilities. That's it, which brings me to the next problem. On a non-support PvP build, damage is always a problem to solve. You always want to be able to swing for the fences, and that's why people run sets like Clever Alchemist, because it gives you a really big burst window with a ton of weapon and spell damage. But the real crux of how to deal damage in PvP is not just big stats equals big numbers equals big dead. No, no, no. Big dead equals a burst combo. Because every player in PvP can bring so much healing to the table, the only way to kill someone is to hit them hard while they can't heal, or to hit them harder than their heals can handle in a short window. That is why we burst people in PvP. In PvE, we want high sustained damage. In PvP, we want one or two seconds of a huge damage spike. The burst combo is the centerpiece of the offensive kit of a PvP build, and I needed a really simple one. Lucky for me, the build is a Templar, and it's a Bow Bow Templar. That means we have two really good ways to try and burst someone down. The first is going to be our standard setup into our standard combo. The standard setup is just, just to drop an arrow barrage where you want to fight. Then we're going to go into focused aim into a biting jabs, and that's it. Just focused aim into biting jabs. Why this combo? Well, arrow barrage with a maelstrom bow is a real nuisance to fight under for the enemy, and the dot from it hits really hard even in PvP. It's also going to give us a big damage buff from the infused Berserker Glyph, but it's only one ability, it's easy to manage, throw it on the ground, forget it. For our actual burst combo though, Focused Aim has Minor Breach on it, so we're going to get another 3k penetration, and Biting Jabs hits plenty hard, especially with our second set, Deadly Strike. Deadly is going to buff our jabs by 15%, which is already a good chunk, and Biting Jabs already hits really hard, so it's just going to hit even harder. Now, one thing you'll notice if you like PvP is that this is not a delayed burst combo, and there isn't a hard crowd control to initiate it. Honestly, based on watching other PvP videos, especially 1vx build videos, this is a pretty trash combo. The key to it, though, is that it is easy, it is immediate pressure, and it is sustained pressure. This isn't a 1vx build. This is a battlegrounds build where other people are going to be smacking your target too, so it gets the job done. Our other burst combo is more focused on the 1v1 situation, and it isn't really a combo at all. It's Toxic Barrage. This is the bow ultimate, and it is nutty. Look at the tooltip. You get a huge 4 second channeled direct damage onslaught that is buffed by the deadly set by 15%, and then you get another huge damage over time after the ultimate ends. And you're immune to disabling effects during the duration. The goal with this ultimate is to pick a target and kill them. This won't kill especially tanking characters, and it's probably not going to kill a Nightblade because they're just going to turn invisible like a turd, but it deals a ton of damage. Snipe into jabs, into a toxic barrage, into a jabs again really puts the hurt on somebody. I'm also using Snipe for Minor Breach instead of Power of the Light because it gives me a long range spammable. Watching fights from afar and still contributing from range is really valuable in a team fight, and Snipe fulfills that role while being an instant hit instead of a delayed burst like Power of the Light. It doesn't hit quite as hard, but it is immediate, which is nice when you're learning. The last challenge to overcome for my simple PvP build was survivability. I know that PvP builds tend to be pretty thick with lots of health, resistances, and healing. This build, I'm gonna admit, doesn't have all of that. This is an unashamed roly-poly. If you've played Horizon Zero Dawn, you know that roll dodging is the most essential defensive mechanic in that game, and with this build being based on that, it's the same here. There are two advantages to running lots of roll dodge though. First, we're gonna evade a ton of damage, obviously. 
Second, though, we're going to get Major Expedition for four seconds because we have a bow on each of our bars, meaning we can GTFO real quick. So to facilitate our rolling habit, we're going to be running a few pieces of well-fitted armor and seven pieces of medium. However, that isn't enough if you can't take a hit at all and if you can't heal. To solve the resistances problem, I went with the simplest route I could at first. I switched Munda Stones to the Lady Stone. This gave me roughly 3k more resistances, which was a decent bit of mitigation. Originally, I was also using the Ring of the Pale Order, which gave me 7% of my damage as healing while in a group of four. It's not a ton of healing, especially in PvP where your damage is cut in half, but it did mitigate some damage. However, after I farmed it out, I swapped the Ring of the Pale Order for the Markin Ring of Majesty. Now, I'm not maximizing its use. I'm only getting 200 weapon and spell damage and 2,000 resistance out of it. But I am getting those all of the time, giving me more damage and some decent resistances. I top all of this off with the Stamina Rune from the Templar skills for extra stamina sustain and a heal if I stand on top of it. And for Major Resolve, which is another 6k resistances but I still need a better heal than just the rune, obviously. As a Templar, there are quite a few good options though. Pretty much all of these can be used somewhere on the build, so take your pick. Currently, I'm running Resolving Vigor on the back bar, which is a staple, and then either Breath of Life or Extended Ritual. Extended Ritual is a really long lasting heal over time, so if you know you're gonna run somewhere out of line of sight, you can then drop the heal, and then you can use it to set up for a nice fight in that area, which is really helpful. Or, if you want to be a little more mobile, you can use Breath of Life for a quick, true burst heal. They're both good options, but you can't spam either one of them because they're pretty expensive on your Magicka. The final heal is also used as a damage buff though, and that's Living Dark. In the next patch, it's actually getting buffed for our build, where it's going to last about 10 seconds, and it's going to have about the same amount of healing per second as I was getting anyway. So it's going to be pretty great. It can also crit heal, and we are running about 40% crit chance on this build. And, good thing to note is that crit healing does not get nerfed by crit resistance, so it's still going to be a really strong heal for us. All in, with these traits, the Mundus, the sets, and the skills, this build is pretty great. It isn't going to 1vx anyone, and it isn't going to win any wards, but what it will do is let you practice your fundamentals like positioning, choosing a target, using line of sight, surviving and dealing some damage. The build is super fun and worth a shot if you hate PvP like I usually do. With that, I'll leave you guys with some Battlegrounds gameplay. If you want to see the build in action or any of my other builds in action, stop by the stream on Thursday or Sunday nights at 8.30 Eastern Time. This is my favorite character right now for a lot of content, so I'm playing on it quite a lot. Until then, I will see you all in the next excuse. Have secured the point.
taking the point. the point. Impossible. They have seized the point. By the aid, the capture point moves. Captured the point! They have seized the point. has moved. has moved. They've captured the point!
military setback. They've taken the point! By the eighth, we have to point boom! Military setback. They've taken the point. They've captured the point. They have seized the point! That new point won't capture itself! 